Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Jake Ludington here at VMworld 2011, and I'm here with Sanjay Raja, and we're going to talk about Tipping Point's Secure Virtualization Framework. That's right. So the Secure Virtualization Framework is a way for customers to be able to migrate their virtual resources uh, from physical resources, but still maintain their security and compliance controls. So it's a very unique solution the way it works because you're really allowed to ease that migration, but also administer policies and keep the same security that I would normally have in a physical network as my virtual network. So it's a very elegant solution that way, very high performing. So people who are, are accustomed to dealing with um, physical network security, what are the core differences between um, dealing with security in, a, in the physical environment versus in the virtualized environment? I think one of the big things is you lose the visibility to what's going on between different virtual machines because they're all sitting on the same server. So it's almost like a black box for a lot of customers in terms of how traffic is flowing between the two, how applications are talking to each other, and how data moves across all these different virtual machines. So when that happens, I lose a lot of visibility and all the security controls that I have, and I really need to figure out a way that I can have the same security levels in place that I have in my physical environment. And again, a lot of that is around compliance. You know, I went through all this time to get my audits done and make sure that I'm compliant in my physical network. How do I make sure I can do that in my virtual network? And that becomes even bigger problem as I move towards public cloud environments where I'm outsourcing a lot of my resources to somebody else. I still want to make sure my data is protected and all my security is in place. What about the scenario where my virtualized environment may not always live on the same physical assets all the time? Um, that's a big uh, benefit of virtualization in VMware specifically is that they have things called like vMotion is an example of that, where it'll migrate VMs to different servers, clusters, and hosts. And the reason it does that is because I get the most use out of my server resources by you know, making sure that I'm sitting on an underutilized server, for example. So even though I may have four or five applications as part of a VM cluster, those VMs may be spread across different infrastructure. How do I make sure my security policies are the same across all the different VMs and my applications are secure in the same way as if a single application is sitting on a single server? Well, what we can do is we can actually have automated uh, policies that move with that VM as the VM moves based on vMotion because we have what's called uh, VMC. It's a virtual management center. It plugs into vCenter. It does a full topology mapping of, mapping of all the logical network infrastructure, but a network or security administrator can apply those policies to VMs as they need to, down to a very granular level, down to a VNIC, an IP address, whatever they want to do, or an application group. So I can apply those policies there, as that VM moves, that policy will follow that VM wherever it goes. And, or if I even clone a VM or add a VM, any sort of dynamic change to the VM, security policy is in place. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. And that's a big thing is, I don't have to configure it every time uh, uh, VMware decides to move a VM somewhere else. So is this a replacement for the application level firewall? Well, we have uh, what's called application DV. So let me take a step back. Is that so? We have uh, a security threat intelligence research called DV Labs. It's the premier security threat intelligence research company, uh, and it's part of Tipping Point. Uh, we find the most vulnerabilities, uh, whether it's Microsoft, Adobe, etc., out of any other uh, company out there. Uh, because of that, we can actually patch our solutions and our customers. On average, it's about minus 26 days, and this is based on independent research that said this. It's not us just saying it. Um, we can patch our systems and our customers much earlier. This becomes really important when you're securing hypervisors on top of operating systems and applications. As part of DV Labs, what we have called Application DV, it allows you to identify applications, and I can even do custom applications if I want to. Um, but I can do things like rate limit applications after identifying them, quarantine applications, do full IPS inspection. So I can do a lot of things there. So we're not a firewall, but if you're looking for application identification and control, we can do that as part of Tipping Point and our IPS appliances. So if you're saying that you can get um, patches and things out 26 days ahead of when the actual official patch is released, is, does that uh, have like a, a mechanism where there's a, a central communication that's happening? Well, what we do is we, we you know, our research team finds these vulnerabilities in the wild and they'll inform the particular application vendor or operating system vendor that has a vulnerability. So they'll let them know so they can work on developing their patches while they're doing that, we'll develop one immediately for our intrusion prevention solutions, install that on all of our customer systems, and we do that through a central management system. They can download these whenever they want. You know, most, a lot of uh, vendors will have a monthly or a weekly way of doing that. As soon as we find one, we'll immediately inform the customer, and if they have it set up that way, they can automatically download it. Um, but we'll have them protected, and their intrusion prevention appliance will have that information already there it'll protect their networks and their servers before the application operating system vendors have their patch in place. 
makes it, it's called virtual patch technology is what we call that. It's much faster than anyone else out there. And again, it gives you confidence that I don't have to really worry about going to a thousand systems and patching them on one day. Since you're protected at the network level and we're able to filter a lot of that traffic that would hit those servers and applications, you're protected much earlier for a longer period of time. And I assume, um, I mean, you know, like large government organizations are not big on, on doing the automated patching that you're talking about. I assume you have a solution to work around something like that as well? Yeah, I mean, you know, when we install the patch or, or install the different vulnerability uh, patches that come into place, you have the choice to be able to do that non-automatically. So, you know, we have a, a, a portal that allows you to look at the different threats that have come out, will inform you that they're there. You can take a look at them and decide on which ones you want to apply and which ones you don't. So you can do it in a manual process if you want, but we provide all the information on our DV Lab site so that you know exactly what's going on. In fact, we'll even get, you know, show you around the world where certain threats are and what the threat assessment is around a lot of places. So we've got a really global intelligence network around this, and we have researchers spread across the globe that spend time working on trying to figure out what's out there and try to provide protections against that. They'll come back to us and work with us to be able to do that, again, much earlier than anybody else. So that's very unique. We have over 1,600 independent researchers that help us out and provide information to us to be able to stop uh, all these threats that are emerging in the wild. And in terms of the virtual security framework, is there anything else that you'd like people to know? I mean, I think the biggest thing is that it's a big challenge to be able to move from physical to virtual to private, hybrid, and public clouds. And we have a strategic partnership with VMware around developing next generation security solutions to be able to help with that migration. Today we have a great solution for helping people move from um, their normal data centers or physical data centers to virtualization environments and private clouds. And as we're working with VMware, we're going to have much better solutions to be able to help address security concerns in the public cloud environment. A big part of that is how do I manage my security posture when things go to the public cloud? You know, I need the visibility to understand how my data is protected. We want to be able to work with VMware and some of the vendors out there around, uh, the, some of the public cloud providers, around how I make sure customers feel confident that they're protected. That enables them to go to virtualization faster, save money much more quickly, go to private cloud, uh, public cloud environments much more faster. So again, it's a strategic development uh, relationship. We're actually develop sharing development resources with VMware to be able to do that. Very unique to the industry right now, and, and again, I, that's what we're really focused on, is being able to enable that. So today, again, we can really help you with accelerating your path to virtualization, so you can put more of your critical assets on VMs. In the future, we're going to help you be able to accelerate your path to the cloud as well.